All right, today we're going to be having a look at the GNU Parallel Command Line Tool, or the Shell Tool. Um, basically, the point of the Parallel Tool, it's in the name, it's to run things from the shell in parallel. Um, anything from, basically any command or anything you can run in shell, um, you run them in parallel so they can run side by side. Um, if you're familiar with Xargs or even just catting a file and piping it into Bash or using things like T, the concepts are kind of similar, except, as I mentioned, this runs in parallel, except for whatever input you give it it in, no matter what runs first, it's going to output it the same way you have it. Um, so the arguments of what to do, it's going to output it the same way, so that way you can use it as input for something else, or even as logging. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, it can be used on your one computer. It can be set up to use on multiple computers. Today we're only going to be looking at some ways to use it on a single computer. Um, if this is a GNU's official website, um, just gnu.org slash software slash parallel, you can go ahead and download it from the latest release. It's going to have a tarball. You just want to extract that and run configure, make, and make install on there. Um, if it's not on your system, it wasn't on my system. I'm running one of the latest version of Ubuntu, I believe. Um, but you can just get it using your own package manager. should have it. And the package should just be called parallel I would assume on every single package manager and their repositories. I already have it installed um, so it's just like that. Um, there's a man page that we'll have a look at a little bit in the future or later in the video but we're gonna look at just some basic commands. So here it says it's kinda similar to this cat bash so let's go ahead and actually look at this test file that I have. It runs a few commands. Um, this is kinda redundant of how everything's set up on here but if we just run that against bash, it's going to run every single line, um, just one line at a time. So let's see the parallel equivalent. So parallel, you'll run it, you'll say the, your command, and then it has its own syntax, it's these three dots, which we'll cover a little bit in the future, although I'm not uh, totally confident that I understand how everything is used, um, but we'll jump about that, we'll talk about that towards the end. Um, I'm going to say the arguments, you just put them in after the three dots, the three colons. And as I mentioned, it's going to output them in the same way that they're inputted. It doesn't matter which one ran first. Um, that's just the output. Um, it's pretty useful. Um, this probably doesn't run that much faster. Um, but as you get bigger, it's going to run faster. And there's some ways that Bash is actually, or Shell, is configured to make sure that it runs is lightning fast. One example is you can do for in and we'll look at this example right here. Let's just loop uh, 1 to 99 and print it out like that. And let's go ahead and cast that in time. As you can say, as you can see, it was 0.001 or 0.001 seconds. Um, it was super fast. And of course, as you get more, it's going to be a little bit it'll take a little bit longer and longer. Um, so this is the case where Bash is actually going to be a little bit faster than just using Parallel. This is, as you can see, um, we'll just do Echo and we'll just do the 99 like that. And let's send that in time as well. And it actually took almost half a second to do the same thing. That's because this is something pretty simple, but it's having to gather everything and then create them um, basically setting jobs to run everything and then afterwards collecting everything. So when it's something really tiny like this, there's kind of no point of doing it. Um, of course, as you get bigger, um, you could argue that it's running faster and faster. Um, one quick thing to note is that if you use sudo for anything, um, this is kind of a dumb example, but it's going to cache your password. Um, I already typed it, I guess, um, above. It was, I guess it was already cached because um, I installed the application through apt. Um, but it caches the password and it's able to use it on every single command that's running. So let's go ahead and look at two two big examples that we're going to do in one. And we're going to let it run so we can compare it and see how long it takes. So let's make two directories. In one directory we'll test without parallel and the other one will test with parallel. So let's first do the one without parallel because it'll take a little bit longer. If we go ahead and just uh, look at this file that I have, I compiled it from the Linux from scratch um, book, 
And it's basically just a list of sources, um, packages, and patches that need to be installed for Linux from scratch. So what you have to do is actually download all these and extract all of them. Um, of course, there's other things like uh, maybe you want to do the checksum, but we're just going to download and extract them. So one way to do that is we'll just do four. Um, there might be better ways of doing this. Feel free to share anything in the comments I'm willing to learn. Um, but we'll just do for file in and it's parentheses cat and we'll take this file and we're just going to do the wget and get them all and I'll do done right there and let's actually create another loop for downloading them all because we want them just all side by side so for file in uh, I believe okay there's some patches and then not the tarballs have a GZ or an XC or something at the end um, so we just want to want the ones that have tar in it um, we'll just do do tar XF and then file and then done and let's go ahead and put that in time as well of course there's ways you can optimize this both with this one and the non-parallel one including especially with the, not, with the parallel one of when you download them and going ahead and extracting them, but we're going to be doing it one at a time. Um, so here's that one running. And let's blow that up a little bit. And let's go ahead in our parallel two. So we're going to go ahead and put it in time. And in this one, we're using parallel. So there's a few different ways you can do this. Um, we can just say wget like this and I should have copied. Um, you can basically just cat it again if you would like. Um, you could also load in the file, I believe. So we're going to try doing that um, just like that. Um, so that's everything you need for that. And now we want to download it. Um, we're going to be trying something a little bit different. Um, of course, so we could do that like that. Um, but it's going to, I checked it, it's basically the same speed. We're going to be piping it. So let's pipe, and for this one we need ls, like that, and we'll just run parallel, and then the command will be tar. So just like that. So at least from the outputs, it looks like it's kind of moving a little bit faster than the non-parallel version. So let's wait for that to run, and we'll go ahead and check out some more things. So I mentioned the man parallel it has a lot of stuff in here. There's one thing that I want to show you that had to do with the syntax. There's the arguments. I'm going to have to jump around until I find it. So hold with me. Um, basically there's ways of attaching multiple things to be ran uh, simultaneously even though they're somewhat different. So here's one example. It's pretty simple. Um, but basically you're just echoing ABC and then you're attaching to that one, two, three and alongside that, you're actually X and Y and then attaching 11 and 22. Um, it works. I'm not fully understanding how it works. Um, so if anyone understands this a little bit better than me, feel free to share um, in the comments. Um, as you can see, here's the output. Um, I attached everything together. And they all ran simultaneously. And they're all in parallel. But this is the way to show I want the output to be this way or I want the log to be this way. Speaking of which, there's another way of generating specific output that you want. Let's just create this directory. Oh, make is what I meant to do. And we're going to be creating results, basically. So let's do parallel results. And we'll say the results will be called like that. Um, that will just be what's appended, prefix to the directories. That's going to be storing the results. The directories will have things like the standard error and the standard output um, in the sequence I believe and we'll just say echo we'll do foo bar one hi so we can check that out here it created all of these directories with the argument and this prefix we can do cat my foo we can see what's in there there's these and that standard out should just have what was expected to have ran um, so see echoed foo so that's one thing I thought was kind of cool. And another thing that we could do, let's 
get rid of these results. You can do bar, and bar is going to generate a progress bar. Um, this might actually be a little bit better if we do just the looping through a bunch of numbers. So bar, echo, So as you can see, there's a progress bar showing everything that was happening. So I just thought that was something that was kind of cool. Now let's jump back to our experiment. So here is the parallel experiment. It took 37 seconds. Uh, let's jump in, look right here. We see we have everything downloaded. So here's like the tars. Um, there's some patches as well. And all of the tar balls were all extracted into their own directories. Um, so as we know, that took... Uh, 37 almost 38 seconds. We'll jump in here. That's actually still going. Um, it's on this sysv init, which I actually think might have been one of the larger ones. So let's go ahead and check sysv init. Um, it's all alphabetical. It's um, right here. So we have, can't even see it all on the screen, but we have all of the tar balls at least to go for it to be finished. Okay, it looks like it actually might have got to the end. Oh, and by my mistake, I did not run that with time. Okay, I just cut to where it happened because I had forgot to actually set time against it. But as you can say, see it took three minutes and 36 seconds, which if I still have it open, it's basically took three minutes longer, um, four or five times longer. So obviously, as you can see, it did the same thing, but the parallel command was able to run it much faster, as expected. But I just thought that was something cool and something that I wanted to share with everybody. Um, what are ways that you guys can use parallel that would help speed up the processes and things that you guys are working on? Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and see you guys again next time. Bye.